Welcome to Down the Garden Path. I'm your host, Joanne Shaw, landscape designer and plant lover. I enjoy discussing down-to-earth tips and advice to help you seasonally manage your garden and landscape, and I also aim to bring you interesting and relevant topics to educate you all about the landscaping and horticultural industry. everyone and welcome to this episode of Down the Garden Path where I want to help you extend the blooms in your garden in the mid-season. Uh, this episode is brought to you by my book Down the Garden Path, a step-by-step -step guide to your Ontario garden and even if you're not in Ontario I know this book will be very helpful because it just gives you that progression of what you should do each month in the garden. Uh, for all the different categories of plants that you may be growing from annuals, perennials, um, tr trees, shrubs, evergreens, I know this will help. Um, it has a great glossary as well as um, some design favorites that Matt and I uh, talk about each month of what looks what's our favorite thing in the garden. So I know it'll help you. So thank you again for listening and for tuning in to this episode of Down the Garden Path. Um, I do want to talk about um, how to extend the blooms in your garden. And it starts with a term that many of you already know, or you maybe you don't know. Hold on one second. <laughs> so I dropped my sheet of paper. Um, and it's called deadheading. So often we start with, a, you know, the goal with any garden is usually to have it be all season, have something of interest, something blooming or something interesting in the garden each month in the year. And that obviously starts with a good plan, which I can always help with. Um, but it also means that um, succession planning, so that you want to make sure that there's something new, something blooming. But it also means that something that bloomed in June, may you can help it maybe bloom again in July and September or in August and September. So, and that's where deadheading and tidying up the garden um, comes in. Now I'm a pretty low maintenance gardener. I that's why I prefer shrubs over perennials, but I have been playing with more and more shrub uh, more and more perennials because I do like the individual pops of color and I love uh, attracting more pollinators to my garden as well. I even had a hummingbird come uh, this year to my uh, Maltese cross and then to my white phlox that was right beside it. So it was very exciting. Um, so anyway, I do want to kind of explain about deadheading. So I have, for instance, I have a lot of catmint in my garden, which I love. I love the silvery uh, gray foliage. I love the fragrance. I think it keeps rabbits away from my garden, especially um, be uh, because it uh, faces the street. It's salt tolerant because my garden goes right to my curb and uh, the snow and the street, you know, they they put that on it all winter. So it's, you know, it's very resistant to that. So it's a tough plant. Um, and once it's finished blooming, yes, it still adds that silvery different tone to the garden. But I love that periwinkle blue flower. So I will go ahead and deadhead some of those plants. Um, sometimes it's you know, individually and carefully. And sometimes it's just grabbing a, a handful of uh, of uh, dead, like of foliage and cutting right at the base. Like you do, remember we used to cut off our ponytails? <laughs> no, don't do that. But you can do that with the plants. So that's something to think about. And it may, it will not, I'm not promising you that it's going to be as put on a same type of show as it did in the spring, but it will still produce some more uh, periwinkle flowers. I have a few plants and a few varieties that actually repeat nicely on their own. I haven't been a great done a great job of labeling which is which. Some need a little bit more help to do that. So I think it's a great thing to do. Uh, we're I'm suggesting doing it at the end of July, but if you wanted to do it right after they finish blooming, that's okay too. So it's just giving you some tips and letting you know not to be afraid of the plants. You can't hurt anything. Um, and to explain what uh, deadheading really is. So salvia is another common one. Uh, it's a clump. It's about two to three feet tall. Um, they are long, spiky flowers with little, um, you know, all the little flowerets uh, on the stem. Um, so when they 
kind of finished blooming and they've kind of gone more gray because all the little uh, flowers have fallen out, you can just go right to the base of that flower. It doesn't really necessarily look dead. It's just no, no longer any color in it. And I think that's the trick. I think it's easy for people to know when to get rid of something that's dead and brown and crispy. But when it's just a, a, a still there standing, looking perky and happy, it just has no more color in it, then it's okay to go at the base, find the next, the first set of leaves after the base of the flower and trim there. And often with salvia, if you're, uh, you may already find that at the base, two, two more branches have come out at the base and little clusters of uh, new flowers are starting to emerge. So this will help that come out uh, faster, as well as encourage another one as well. So you're just telling the plant that they're not done and that they can keep um, producing flowers. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, another common, you know, similar is phlox. There you may have multiple, as it plant matures, you may have multiple stems and some will bloom first and some will bloom second. And so it's something to keep in mind that you can, you know, get rid of the spent flowers, get rid of the, the first stem to encourage more stems blooming. Um, it's not as clear as it is on, in the sense that you're trimming off the flower. So in that case, you may be just trimming the stems to encourage new blooms. Um, and to just extend the life of those mid stem because that one's mid this is now the time for flocks to look great. So um, you want to extend those blooms as long as you possibly can, because we know pollinators like them too. Um, I also, I think of many people have uh, dianthus or pinks, cheddar pinks, another term, and they are a nice, um, not quite a ground cover, but a very low profile perennial. Um, some of them have like more of a blue-ish tone, very um, thin, thin type of feathery, uh, foliage on them and often they will bloom all at the same time and then they're done all at the same time so the flowers still stay standing but they've all gone crispy or brown or just no longer flowering so you can come along and just deadhead those sometimes they may you know pop up and just be intermittent depends on your variety so you might have two that are finished blooming and then five that are still blooming so go ahead uh, and trim off the ones that are finished blooming to kind of help the plant keep sending energy to blooming and not to setting seed, which is what it wants to do if uh, if it's not going to, uh, if, if we don't prune them. It's just going to say, okay, I'm done now. I'm going to go rest. So we want to kind of encourage that uh, process to keep flowering as much as possible. Uh, so yeah, so those are, that's a common uh, plant and it's a handy one, especially for a lower layer of uh, perennial versus having some taller ones uh, in your garden. Um, that is, oh, a lavender is another good example. You know, you can also trim that. You start to see, I find mine dries out in sections and other sections look good. And some seasons it it, uh, it doesn't dry out and it stays really nice. So that's something you can see in your garden how it does. But if you are finding that you've got a whole bunch of stems that have, have gone light uh, gray now and they're no longer really showing that purple lavender color, then go ahead and uh, you, can, you can certainly bring those um, dried out ones in inside because that fragrance is still very much alive in the plant. And then that'll help encourage it to bloom a little bit longer. Uh, so that's a great trick for lavender in your garden. Um, deadheading can also happen in your shade garden. Uh, I think of hostas. Many hostas, you know, the most common green and white variegated hosta, they send up um, purple stems, purple flowers, sorry, on stems in the garden. But I find once they're very showy once they're blooming, great for pollinators, the bees love them. But once it's finished, they the flowers just kind of disappear. And you've got these, you know, weird stalks coming out from the center of the center of your guard of your hosta. And I find it makes the hostas look very messy. So it's okay. I think some people are afraid that they're going to kill or damage or that they don't, that it's not, um, they're not supposed to, but you can go ahead and cut those flowers off at the base, um, right inside the plant. So don't leave them hanging like two or three inches above the plant, cut right inside. And sometimes they may rebloom. So especially if you've got one that blooms early, 
by cutting them, you may get a rebloom. So that's exciting. Uh, I've never been a fan. I have to confess, I've never been a super fan of uh, hosta flowers, and I've always kind of cut them back. Um, but I know some of the deep green or blue ones have a really nice, big, showy white flower, and they can be fragrant too. So, so that's something to consider in your shade garden. That if you like the blooms then just make sure you deadhead them so you can hopefully get more blooms. And if you don't like the blooms, it's okay. You can just, uh, you can just cut them off. That's all right. Um, ferns, another plant that is popular in the shade garden. And they tend to leaf out very early. They don't necessarily have a flower, but they do green up and leaf out earlier in the season. And sometimes in the midsummer, the heat, the drought, other plants uh, get in its way and they tend to brown up and crisp up a little bit and may not look as nice. You can go ahead, deadhead them, cut that off. You may, not always, but you may get a second leafing out. I'm having that. I, I A friend of mine shared some um, ostrich ferns with me. And of course, I left them in the pot too long before I planted them. So they've gone crispy. And so she said, you know, just go ahead and cut them off and you'll get plants next year. Well, they are start they're sending up like little bits of green. So I probably won't get a big, you know, big showing, but I'm going to get something. So I think that's great. Um, and it's a way to just extend, especially the shade garden where we need to sometimes work a little harder to get interest in that shade garden and keep those plants happy. So many of them are really showy in the spring and then they kind of peter out later in the season. So anything we can do to kind of help increase the interest in our shade garden is always great. Other things like Brennera or Lungwort, you certainly can deadhead the, the flowers. I haven't found in my experience that they uh, will rebloom, but I think it makes the plant look more attractive once you've gotten rid of the, the spent blooms. I think the foliage, I plant those, the flowers are bonus for me on those because I really like the interesting foliage in the shade garden. Uh, both of them are kind of like a silvery uh, spotted green and, and white uh, uh, different text, different leaf color that really sparks up a shade garden. So, um, so yeah. Uh, oh, I also want to mention columbine. I know I'm sure many of you have columbine somewhere in your garden, probably in the shade. And they, they hold their foliage nicely. Sometimes you'll see uh, some like little um, insect damage on the leaves, but they stay green and they stay upright and they seem to be fairly happy and they're great for the shade garden. What you will find this time of year is the stems from the spent flowers are still up and they've dried out, you know, they look fairly innocuous, and, you know, no big deal because they're not, it's not a really substantial flower, but I go ahead and trim those stems off. And when you're doing that, you're going to hear the seeds. So it, when the flower dries, it's got seeds inside the pod now for flowers for next year. So you can do one of two things. You can, uh, what I did was I cut off the stems and then shook out shook out the pot, dried pods elsewhere in my garden. So hopefully encouraging um, columbines to grow elsewhere in the garden next year. Or you can maybe put them in a jar and share them with friends or you can maybe start them from seed for a garden center, or sorry, not a garden center, for a garden uh, plant sale or something in the spring. So uh, so yeah, so that's something to think about for your columbine. It's an easy way to make more plants the uh, and to clean it up because I find, what, again, like, like I said with some of the other, like Brenner and Lungwort, removing the spent, and the hostas, removing the spent flowers really freshens up the plant in my point of view, and it just extends um, the shade garden looking more interesting. So I also want to talk about peonies in this case, because this time of year, you, you know, we've obviously, they finished blooming. And I love the foliage of peonies. I think we should definitely keep them, you know, up and keep it in a, a, the forefront of your garden. But sometimes they, because of the, the humidity and maybe the crowding in your garden, the foliage gets very uh, mildewy, or maybe it goes black. Or the uh, flower heads, the spent flower heads don't look super attractive. So you can, I mean, you could deadhead the flower heads. Like I said, the foliage is very interesting. Or you can, or not the flower heads, sorry, the, the foliage is very interesting. And they can be added to your garden. Um, you know, it looks good. Or I, I even cut them sometimes and bring them in because they they look very nice. And you can do that with hosta leaves too. If you've got a couple of hostas that you really like the foliage, you can cut them and bring them in the house and put them in a vase of water. I think they look fabulous. So back to the, um, uh, oh gosh, what was I talking about? Um,
So for your peonies, if you are finding there's a bit of mildew and or they the foliage is going black or the you know then it is okay to go ahead and cut them right to the ground. Your other plants will grow up around them and you won't even notice them and it's not affecting the plant uh, rebounding next year. It'll be fine. But something to consider if you are finding that mildew is a common problem every season, then you might want to look at um, putting more space between your peony and other plants so that there's more air circulation. So it's, it's uh, you know, that's the problem. If there's too much plants touching each other and there's a lot less circulation, then, then mildew can be an issue. And if your peony is like mine, not really flowering as well as it used to, then that's something to th think about because we, I know I'm, I make this mistake sometimes when I'm designing a garden because I'm there in the early spring and it seems like there's lots of sun there. And so a perfect place for a peony, especially by the front door, which where is my, which is where mine is, but my trees have grown. So, you know, it slowly was a profuse bloomer, of course, when I first planted it. And then it's slowly, slowly, you know, not performing as well as it used to. And then this year I didn't get any bloom at all. And I just have to accept the fact that my city trees have grown too big and now it's it's really a shade garden. So I need to move my peonies. The fall is the best time to move your peonies. So I wouldn't do it right now. I would wait for cooler temperatures um, before you do that because uh, I don't want to risk anything. But you can just keep in mind that if something, and this goes for many of your perennials, if you have other things that used to, you know, two years ago put on a really great show, but now mid-August, mid-season, it's really not performing like it used to, then really take a look at what could be shading it. Maybe the perennials beside it have gotten taller, your trees have grown, your shrubs have grown. So you may want to come up with a relocation plan for the fall. So that's my tips for increasing your blooms for the mid-season and extending your bloom times. There's so many great perennials out there where you can do that, where you can just do a little bit of trimming and uh, you can get some more re-blooming in your garden. I wish we could do that with peonies. I wish we could deadhead them in the spring and that they come back in later in the season, but unfortunately we can't. <laughs> um, so I hope that helps you. Um, with this time of year and to extend your blooms. If you have any questions about a particular plant that I may not have mentioned, then please reach out. Don't forget, I have the uh, Down the Garden Path podcast Facebook group still alive and well on Facebook. And uh, it's a great place for you to take some pictures uh, if you've got any issues or concerns, or if you just want to show me a good, happy plant, that's always good too. But I'm happy to answer your questions there. Or you can always email me at joanne at down to earth ca and always the number two with down to earth so once again this episode is brought to you by down the garden path a step-by-step -step guide to your ontario garden please look for it on amazon and i really know it will help you um, really create a low maintenance garden and know what to do and when to do it so thanks again for listening and for tuning in and joining me down the garden path bye for now 